All right, what we're going to discuss here is how to set up a float rig. To start off with, I use nothing but bait casting reels. I like low profile bait casting reels such as the Shimano Corrado. Uh, it's got really high speed uh, retrieve. I fill it full about 30 pound uh, braided line. The braided line really works because of the fact that this braided line floats on top of the water like a floating fly line. No stretch matched, uh, matched up with a really soft uh, light rod and you get yourself a, a beginning of a nice uh, float rig set up. Float rig fishing is basically what we do in Northeast Florida. They do it in Georgia and they do it in some in the Carolinas. The reason being is because we can take a bait and we can float it off behind the boat we're using the current from an anchored boat. Um, I like to use bait casting and I find using spinning tackle like sacrilegious. That's my opinion. I don't know. Call me different. I don't, I don't believe in using spinning gear. I have a lot of friends that do. It just, to me, I think, uh, it's, it's a spinning gear. It's for other things. It's not for float rig fishing. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how to set up a float rig. There's the end of our super braid line. Okay, I had to make one up because I don't have one handy. But in your package with your float, and when I'm talking about a float, I'm talking about a float that looks similar to this. These are handmade floats that I buy. I get them from a long ways away. They're soft. Uh, open cell phone and I'm sure everybody will email me hey where do you get those floats yeah and the only person that's going to be making out is a guy who sells them so this is a center line float line goes through the tube exits out here okay first thing when you get your float in in uh, the package you'll have your float and you have to match it number one to the weight I use a two ounce weight I like two ounce for about everything because I can go from fishing two foot of water, three foot of water to 20 foot of water in good current. So this two ounce does me almost everywhere I go. Plus the two ounces gives you some serious casting distance if need be, which most of the time we don't need to cast. We're just placing the boat where we want it to be and drifting the floats off over the structure behind the boat using the tide. Okay. First thing you're going to do, I'm going to really be moving along here, is you'll receive something in there that looks like this in your float package. It is a stopper knot on a tube. I made this one up to represent what it looks like, sort of, because I don't have one handy. I make all my stopper knots just by tying my own real quick. But this is just a little idiot proof thing they give you. What you're going to do is you're going to run your line through this okay give it a good give it a good amount okay then you're going to slide off the stopper knot okay and when you slide off the stopper knot I just pinch it bam I pinch it take this tube off chuck it get rid of it then you're going to take your two tag ends here and you're going to pull them tight I hope you all can see that good because that makes your stopper knot and the stopper knot is a knot that will hold on to the line but you can move it up and down okay you snug that leave some tag ends on here because it'll go right in and out of your guides Cut it off, but leave some tag ends so you can snug it up later if it loosens up. Okay, with that out of the way, that's what's going to set the depth of your float. Okay, so I'm going to move it out of the way. And I'm going to bring in my end of my line again, my tag end of my line here. Okay, now when you get your float, many times they're going to give you beads. Okay, and... Here's one. They're very hard to pick up. Very small bead. Okay. You're going to take a, the small bead, if they give you two different sizes, 
and we're going to thread this on the 30 pound braided line. Okay, so there's the bead on there. Okay, we're going to move that up. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your float. This float right here is identically matched, perfect, to a two ounce trout lead. All right. So you take this. This is the reason they refer to it as a center line or slip float. Okay, and you're going to get that in there, which I can't. Let me get a little closer here. Okay, and you're going to put that through. There it is, sticking out the end. Now you're going to pull that through. Okay, move that to the side. Go back down to your end here again. And if they give you another bead, which they should, and all these packages they usually do, me personally, I like to use a bigger bead on the bottom. And I'm going to thread that on. So, as what you see here is that little small bead sits on top. The larger bead sits on the bottom. Now, here's what I do that's a lot different than a lot of people, okay? Is I'll take my lines and I'll pull some like this and I will double it, okay? There is a method to the madness here. And what I'll do is I'll just start making some loop knots. I'll take this, I'll stick it through, stick it through, pull it tight keeping a good size not a loop here at the bottom. I'll take the tag end here that you see. I'll make that a loop and I'll send the whole thing through again. Okay. And what I'm trying to do is just to build up a really good size knot. There you go. Right at the end. Okay. And I'll keep doing this. You can go in and you can make something a little more fancy. You can go around and around. It really doesn't matter. Your braided line is so strong that you just want a gobstopper, if you want to use that term, which I will. Big knot at the end. So now, as you can see, I have a loop. Let me cut this little tag end off. Okay. Let me cut this off. All right. So now, what do I have? Let me get my hand out of the way. Is I have a big knot with that bead coming down and banging onto it. So that leaves me with this loop and you say what the heck are you doing why are you leaving a loop in there well i'm going to show you this when you're done fishing when it's attached to your trout lead which i'll take and i'll hold this tight okay i'll take my trout lead and I'll just stick it on there and do a quick little knot. Okay. Bring it around. Remember we're trout fishing here. We're not, we're, we're not blue marlin fishing. Okay. So now I have my trout lead down here. And I'm going to cut off the tag end. I got my trout lead down here attached to a double line. See that? Double line to the trout lead, up to the knot, then the float hits that. What that does is it keeps my sinker, my trout lead, away from my float. Number one, I don't want my floats banging down on top of this. 
That's just a pet peeve of mine. Okay. And when I'm done at the end of the day, this took a little bit of thinking, I guess you could say, is when I'm done at the end of the day, I take and I cut off my leader because my leader would go here and put about 20, 22, 24 inches of leader on this swivel here to my hook. At the end of the day, or whenever I move, I get rid of my leader because it's going to get scuffed up. I bring this whole entire thing down to my reel and I take this, slip it over the reel handle and onto my reel and tighten it up. Now my lead is tight and it ain't gonna this you could run you can run down the river or whatever and now this is secure. Let me show you how I do it here. So stand by a second. I'm going to take it and put it on the reel for you so you get to see what I'm talking about. Okay. It's hard to do because I'm just doing this filming at my workbench here. Okay, there we go. We're all set up. And this is what it looks like. Now, there's my float. I take this loop. I run it around my reel, especially with the gear case of these low profile reels. My sinker's secure down here when it's in the rod holder or in my leaning post or along my console or anything like that. And now this isn't going anywhere. And I see all the time people flying down the river and their floats are at the rod tips. And these things are just flailing all over the place. I learned to do this. Uh, back when I came home from a trip one day, had all the floats sitting up in my leaning post at the ends. And when I pulled into the driveway, all my floats, every one of my floats, pulled out a bunch of line on a loose drag. And I had around the rigging of the outboard, I had four or five floats all in a gigantic ball. Okay. So that right there is a good way of transporting your float and then when you when you get ready to fish you put on your leader when you're done fishing or you're going to be moving and making a long run what the heck it's only a leader and a hook untie it and you're ready to go